My mother's name was Irene Ramos. Um, she was the daughter of migrant workers. She was a migrant worker herself. Um, she only completed the ninth grade. She herself was born in Omani, California, as was her mother, Josefina Ramos. Uh, my grandpa, uh, Francisco Ramos. My grandmother's uh, maiden name was Cervantes. Um, no, Campos. Josefina Campos Ramos, and my grandfather's um, mother's maiden name was Cervantes. My grandpa was born in Nogales, um, Arizona. At the same year, Arizona became a state. Um, her, he was um, half to Honorum. Um, I don't know when my grandparents were married, but they had six children, uh, one of whom died. Their eldest, Adelinda Ramos, died when she was six because there weren't any hospitals who would take a Mexican child. And they had to drive um, 50 miles to find a hospital that take uh, Mexican migrant workers. And she died of complications that arose after being injured while picking in the fields. She was five years old. Um, she died of pneumonia, complications of pneumonia. My mother was one of actually seven children. My mom was number three after Edlinda died. She used to tell stories about being beaten in school when she spoke Spanish. She had scars on her hands from um, the rulers when the teachers would hit them for speaking Spanish. Um, she also had scars on her arms from picking grapes. She thinks grapes are vicious. <laughs> um, my grandfather, they settled in the Hicks camp, which was a migrant workers camp in El Monte. Uh, that's where most of my aunts and uncles um, were born. And then eventually my dad worked, my grandpa worked as a laborer and we bought a house in Almani. My um, father um, can trace his lineage back to 1619, among the first pilgrims that came to the United States, the Lewises. His name was, um, his name is, he's still alive, William Lewis Chandler II. My mother's name was Irene Ramos uh, Chandler. Um, his, on his mother's side, uh, the Haupts immigrated to um, the United States from Germany, fleeing, fleeing religious persecution. The Lewises um, became farmers in Missouri. Columbia settled in, in Columbia, and they were abolitionists. They were among those who were at um, that insurrection, and they happened to escape. Settled in California. Uh, my great-grandfather, William Henry, um, Lewis Chandler, who was Dean of Agriculture um, for UCLA, uh, in charge of what was the agricultural campus, it's now known as UC Riverside. Um, he was kind of a revolutionary in the UC system back in the day because he accepted black students. And when he retired in the 1960s, he had all these testimonials from the leaders of African countries who thanked them for teaching what became their uh, ministers of agriculture when the African co um, colonies uh, uh, became independent. Um, he accepted um, students from Africa to train them in how to, to do agriculture. Um, he was also a long time uh, financial supporter of the NAACP back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. So on one side, and my grandfather, my father's father, um, he was a microbiologist, um, got his degrees at Berkeley and at Cornell. And during World War II, he did not fight. He worked for the Department of Defense and he toured the United States inspecting um, food facilities to make sure that they weren't being sabotaged. He met my grandmother. She's the help. Her last name was Robertson. Her father fought in World War II. Um, family legend says he had mustard gas, but I'm not sure. But he was um, institutionalized when he came back from the war. Um, his wife's name was um, Catherine Halp Robertson, because his last name was Robertson. And she ended up being a single mother with two children. My grandfather was one of four, um, only male, second eldest. Um, so my grandmother was farmed out to live, out, to live with her um, maiden aunt in Berkeley. Um, as a result, she, had, she managed to go to college. Um, her siblings did not, but um, my grandmother and grandfather met um, at UC Berkeley when UC Berkeley was free. And they met during the Depression, married during the Depression. Um, fast forward to the 
50s, my grandparents had settled in um, Pasadena. My grandfather was working as a microbiologist, well, Altadena actually, but property in Altadena. And it's what we now would call the Rodney Keene portion of Altadena, but at the time it was still highly undeveloped. And so my father went to John Muir High School. All his friends were Latino or black. And uh, when he was about 18, he went to the only music facility in um, Los Angeles that allowed black and Latino uh, people to attend, um, Legion Stadium, and to see some bands perform. I know who was performing. Um, Fats Domino was the headliner. My mother had gone with her sisters. Her sister, my mom was one of uh, six kids, and she had only um, one living, surviving sister, and the rest were all brothers. And so my aunt, who was married, and my mother had to go chaperone everybody, even though they were married. Uh, my aunt got married at 15. Um, so my aunt and my uncle went to Legion Stadium with my mom. Her wedding ring didn't fit, so she gave her wedding ring to my mother while she and my uncle went dancing all the time. So my dad saw my mom, thought she was really cute, but she had this wedding ring, but there was no man around. So my dad monopolized her entire time at the concert. And my mom was very frustrated because she loved to dance, but she couldn't get up because there was this white guy sitting there. My dad is blonde haired, um, blue eyed, white. My mother was very misty, so was very misty, so looking. She couldn't move. Protocol, man talking to woman, can't go interrupt. And it wasn't until my, my, my tia came up and asked for a wedding ring back that my dad was oh, and asked her out. <laughs> and that's how they met. I was born, they got married in 1960. So she would have been about 17 at the time, 17. She had dropped out of school in ninth grade to help support the family. Um, so um, they dated and then he proposed and then made the misfortune of proposing the same day my great grandma, my grandmother's mother died. <laughs> and so my mom didn't tell anyone for a while. Uh, there was a song, uh, we're going to the chapel. So she started playing a lot. My grandma comes into the room. They lived in a two bedroom house in Almani. All six kids either lived in the living room or the bedroom. The girls had the bedroom and the boys lived in the living room. My grandma and grandpa lived in their own bedroom. And my grandma came, do you want to tell me something? Because she was playing, we're going to the chapel. The mom actually confessed. Um, when my parents got engaged, my grandparents stopped speaking to me in English. My grandma's English was never any good anyway. And my dad speaks fluent Spanish, better than my mother does. They got married in 61. I was born in 63. Okay. And in 65, my parents joined in. My father was, um, had dropped out of community college and was working as an orderly at California General Hospital. And he was involved in the union. Um, he worked mostly in the morgue. My mother was a stay-at-home housewife. And um, he, the union uh, had collected donations to help support this brand new um, effort in Delano. So my dad volunteered to drive up all the donations that the hospital workers union, I don't remember the name of the union, it wasn't HRE, it wasn't 1199, it was a hospital workers union. At the time, he drove up to Delano and came back and said, Irene, we're quit I'm quitting my job and guess what I'm doing? He uh, joined the United Farm Workers. I was two at the time. They had bought a house and they had a dog that my father had rescued, uh, Samoya, they had rescued from the, from the um, animal shelter. Dog and the house went to my grandparents, <laughs> my white grandparents, and my parents packed up and moved up to Delano.